Good morning, my fellow painters. Thank you for joining me while we paint our wonderful ice cream cones and popsicle. You'll notice here that I am first taping down my image. Why I'm doing that is so I can have a nice, crisp, clean border around the edge when I'm all done painting. You'll notice that I'm using my nail to really seal around the edge that's so water and color doesn't seep underneath. I'm using blue painter's tape because it doesn't adhere too much to the surface of my paper, just enough to keep the water and the color from penetrating my border. Now I am using my large one and a half flat brush to wet the entire surface of my paper. You can tell if your paper is saturated all the way through and covers the entire area by holding your head down towards the side and looking at your paper in the light. If it's shiny, it's wet. If there are dull spots, those are dry areas. We want to be sure our entire surface is wet to achieve a nice, smooth background. We'll allow that to sit for just a few minutes while we mix our background color. I chose to do a nice soft blue background because it's summertime and we have lots of blue skies. So I'm going to grab some blue, mix it on my palette, and I'm going to add that to my background. What I mean by mixing it on my palette is I'm adding blue to my palette and I am adding water to it to make it lighter. I don't want my background to be really, really dark. Now I am applying the watered down blue paint to my wet background. You'll notice that as I do this, it moves. As long as the paper's wet, watercolor will move. I'm not worrying too much about it getting in on my ice cream cones. I don't have to worry about that because I rather like the effect of the blue background kind of penetrating the cones. Now, if it's really, really wet and it's really causing puddles or flowing a lot onto my popsicle or my ice cream cones, I will use a dry brush to kind of soak up those areas. I will also use some paper towels to soak up or blot any areas that I don't want the paint traveling to. As soon as you dry the paper, the paint won't travel. Now here you'll see I'm adding a touch of pink or red to the blue background. I can do that as long as my background is still damp. What you don't want to do is fuss too much in your background. You want to drop your paint in and get out. The more that you fuss, the more you disturb the paint, the blotchier your background painting will be. Once I'm happy with how my background looks, I'm going to blow dry my painting. You can either blow dry it or just walk away for a while and let it dry thoroughly. Why do we do this? We want to go ahead and paint the ice cream cones and the popsicle without the colors of the ice cream cone and popsicle traveling into our background. The colors I chose for my ice cream cone and popsicle are pink, purple, and brown. The pink I'm using is Permanent Rose. The blue that I've used for the background and that I'll use to get my purple is Windsor Blue Red Shade. And the yellow, which I use to get the brown, is Windsor Yellow.
Once our paper is completely dry, you can usually tell by touching it, we're going to go ahead and start adding color. The first thing I'm doing is I'm working on my very first soft serve cone and I am wetting the ice cream surface with clean water. Again, I wet the entire surface. It doesn't have to be sopping wet, but I do want it damp. I want my pinks and my purples to flow within my water. Why? I don't want any hard edges in my ice cream cone at this point. Now I have grabbed some of my permanent rose, my red or my pink, I've added water to it on my palette so it's not quite so dark and I am beginning to drop it into my ice cream cone. I am trying to leave some lighter spots and create some darker areas. I am using the left side of each one of my cones in my popsicle as the darker side and the right side will be lighter as if there is light on that edge. If you lose some light spots, don't worry. This is our first layer. We are going to be glazing our ice cream cones, so we will be putting layers on top of this. As long as the area you're working in is still damp, you can go ahead and continue to add your permanent rose or your red color to your cone. I'm doing that here. I'll notice that I have switched to a smaller brush because I want to control a little bit uh, where the paint is going. Again, the idea here is to drop your paint in and get out. We don't want to fuss too much. We want the paint to flow and create nice soft edges. I'm concentrating the added pink towards the left side of my cone to create shadow, as well as where the swirls are to create depth. So where it's darker means that it recesses. Where the ice cream is lighter is where it comes forward. This is how we are creating lights and shadows, which in turn creates the depth of our ice cream cone. As your paint dries, you'll notice that it does get lighter. That happens in watercolors all the time. Don't worry about it. We are going to continually add some layers to our cones to create the depth that we want. As long as my cone area is still damp, I can continue to add color to that without getting a really hard line. Now you'll notice as your paper does dry slowly, your paint will not move as much. And this is good. We're able to concentrate more color in certain areas. Since we have our red out, on our palette, let's go ahead and do the top scoop to our next cone. So go ahead and wet your cone, your top scoop. Drop in some of that pink or red. If you need to lift a little bit of that color out, use your brush, a dry brush or your paper towel and go ahead and dab some of it out to keep those lighter areas. And let's go ahead and wet our popsicle. Wet the entire popsicle and drop your pink or your red in at the top. And I've decided to do a two-tone popsicle. So I have went ahead and mixed on my palette some of my pink or red with my blue to create purple. And I'm adding the purple at the bottom of my popsicle. Once I add it at the top, I don't need to disturb that. I can add my purple at the bottom and let those flow together. Next, I'm going to add my middle scoop on my middle cone, which is brown. How do we get brown? I always start with my red or my pink 
color. I mixed in my yellow to get a nice orange color. And then I slowly mix in some blue until it gets to be the tone of brown that I want. You can choose to mix this way, or if you already have a pre-mixed brown, go ahead and use that. Next, I'm going to add my purple to the bottom scoop of my middle cone. I already have it mixed with the red and blue from my popsicle. So I can go ahead and just add that onto the scoop of the bottom cone. Next, we are going to do our cones themselves. Again, we have brown. If you need to mix more, you want to mix your red and your yellow and get a nice orange and slowly, slowly add blue to get the tone of brown you want. Wet each cone and popsicle stick with clear water and drop your brown in and let it flow. This is our initial layer and we want it soft. We are going to go ahead and dry our entire painting at this point. You can use a blow dryer or you can choose to just get up, walk away, take a break, which is always, always good, and let your painting air dry. For the next steps in our project, we're going to use two paintbrushes, our middle paintbrush and our smaller round. One is going to be clean with just water and one is going to have our paint on it, loaded on the paintbrush. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our first ice cream cone and we're going to load our smaller brush with some paint our pink or our red that we've been using. You're going to drop it down along the left top edge and then don't do a lot. You just want to do small sections. Take your middle round brush with your clean water and just touch the very edge of where you dropped your paint and pull that paint down into your cone, your ice cream. So basically what we're doing is we're working on a dry surface with a wet paintbrush that's loaded with color and a second brush that's clean with clean water to pull the paint into the ice cream cone. It's gonna give it a gradient effect. So here you can see I'm doing it again. I'm adding the paint with my smaller brush and I'm just touching the very edge of that paint that I just laid down with my clean, wet brush and pulling that paint up into my cone, my ice cream. This is a more controlled way to paint with your colors and create that gradient. We will continue this technique throughout the entire ice cream cone from top to bottom. Each time you are using your middle brush to pull the paint that you freshly laid down, be sure that you have cleaned it in your clean water and you have fresh water on it. If you continuously use the same brush without cleaning it, you are transferring paint in areas you don't want to. We will continue this down the cone and we will do this on each 
ice cream cone we have. This is going to create more definition and it creates a harder line on the outside, which defines the actual ice cream for us against the background. Because my ice cream cones themselves only have one very light layer of brown, I am going to go ahead and wet each cone and drop brown in, just like we did earlier. I am concentrating my brown along the left edge, along any ridges that I want a shadow, as well as under the ice cream itself. Going back to the middle scoops of my middle ice cream cone, I'm going back to the two brush method. I'm dropping my color in and moving it with my clean wet brush. I will bounce between these two techniques throughout the rest of my painting. If the area is small, I will use my two brush method or if I want more definition, if I feel the area needs extra layers of actual color, I'll go back to wetting the entire area and dropping large amounts of color in. We'll use the same process on the popsicle. However, with the popsicle, this is where we can start to define the indentations in the popsicle. We will also use our purple and our pink so that we can create the two-tone popsicle that we had. You'll notice that I am currently adding some pink and purple with my middle brush to my popsicle. Just to add a little more depth to it and then I'm using the pull technique where I add darker color and then use my clean brush to move that color up into my popsicle. I want to define my edges. Now we are going to let our painting dry. Again, you can use your blow dryer or choose to take a break at this point and let your painting air dry. Now that our painting is completely dry, we can start the last steps of our painting process. At this point, I'm using a wet brush on dry paper. I am not wetting my areas. 
But what I'm doing is using my middle round brush and I am adding brown, any pinks, any purples to any areas that I really want to punch out. Basically, I'm creating a darker shadow along the left side of my cones, as well as creating a darker shadow along the ice creams themselves, the scoops and the soft serve. Creating a shadow along the drips where they're touching the cone itself and under any ridges. At this point also, we want to be sure that we are creating some texture on our cone. So I'm not as concerned about smoothing out any hard edges. I'm kind of letting them be. This is also at the point where I will loosely start to define the lines that are within the cones themselves that kind of create that waffle texture. Depending on the size of the area I'm working in, I will switch to my smaller round brush. For example, the center scoop and the lower scoop of the center ice cream cone are smaller areas. I choose to use a smaller round brush to work within those areas. You'll also notice that as I get towards the end of my painting process, and the details are getting smaller and smaller, I primarily use my smaller brush. Continue this process of using your wet, loaded brush on dry surface until you are satisfied with the depth of your color. You can go as dark or as light as you want to. Now, you will notice that as you paint, your paper will become damp. That's because you are adding wet color to a dry surface. So if you do try to add color to an already damp area, it may move on you when you don't want it to. If this is the case, I recommend doing a layer, blow drying it, letting it dry completely, and then adding another layer. That way you have more control over what's happening on your painting.
For our popsicle, I have switched to the smaller brush and I'm really defining the dips that are on each side of the popsicle as well as where the bite mark is. So in order to make that pop, I want to line around where the bite mark is and then create shadows on the inside of the bite mark. I also want to create a shadow on the left side of the popsicle on each side of those indentations or ridges. So you'll notice that those areas are darker. Once you have completed your layers and you're very happy with the depth and color of your ice cream cones, it's time to dry your painting completely. There is one more step in our painting process before we are completely done. However, before we start this step, we absolutely must have a completely dry surface. Once our painting is completely dry, we can do the very exciting process of removing our tape. Be very careful removing your tape. Move slowly, pull the tape away from your painting, not toward your painting. If it so start to tear, use your finger and hold down that area and pull on a sharp angle slowly away from your painting. That will usually take care of any small tears that start to happen. Ta-da! There is your beautiful painting. If some of the paint seeped under your tape, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Try again next time. For the very last part of our painting process, we are going to use a sharp X-Acto knife. Make sure your blade is sharp so it doesn't tear at your paper. We are very lightly going to scrape away some highlights in our painting. So you're going to use the very tip of your blade, slowly move the blade back and forth over an area until you see the white of the paper. You do not want to do this process fast and you do not want to press extremely hard, otherwise you will put a hole right through your painting. Take your time, do it slow, and you will start to see the white of the paper come back. This is a fantastic way to give your painting its white highlights and really make it pop.
everybody. Thank you so much for panning along with me. I do so enjoy it. Please remember to take a photo of your painting and upload it to the Brush Baby group and share with the rest of us. We love to see what you're creating. I do have another free tutorial coming this fall. Please watch for that. It's going to be a great time. If you feel like you have benefited from these tutorials, please donate to my channel. You can donate through PayPal or Venmo, or you can contact me to make a donation. Your donation gives me the ability to make these free videos. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you in the fall.